three out of every four Americans believe that the federal government is way too big, not just a little too big, not just a, a little oversized, not just a little bit too much waste and fraud, but way too big and needs to be reduced drastically. Every time the question is asked, three out of four say, yes, the government must be much, much smaller than it is now. You're and, absolutely right. But, nine but we are losing the battle politically. Uh, you're, you're absolutely right. But nine out of ten incumbents are returned time and time again. Yes, of course, because everything is to their advantage. They, they have free franking privileges. They send out re-election re literature disguised as monthly reports for their constituents. They have all the largest of the federal government to bestow upon their uh, number one donors in, in their districts and so forth. Everything is in their favor, which is a, one reason you need term limits. The point is that the American people recognize that government doesn't work and they are ready to cut it. But politically, we are continuing to lose because the two parties in Washington are still arguing not about how much government should be cut, but at what rate government should continue to grow. I take it you are a strict constitutionalist. Absolutely. How are term limits constitutional? They're not necessarily at the moment, but I think they should be added to the Constitution. I think that they are something that the Founding Fathers missed, and so they should be added by constitutional amendment. Some people say that's anti-democratic not to let people elect a congressman to a 20th term, but the entire Constitution is anti-democratic. The entire Constitution is putting limits on what government can do, on what people can vote the government to do. You can't vote to, to take away people's free speech, according to the Constitution. What has been going on for much too long and is certainly going on today is a game of let's pretend. The Republicans pretend to cut. And the Democrats pretend the Republicans are mean-spirited, and the press <laughs> pretends to worry about the widows and orphans. It's true. And that's all that's going on. The Republicans campaign as though they were libertarians, but once they are elected, they govern as Democrats. And there is not the dime's worth of difference between them, as George Wallace said. East of the Rockies, you're on the air with Harry Brown. Uh, yes, um, I think concepts are being um, uh, misdefined here. I think the real problem with government is that it's controlled 99% by big business and the transnational corporations. I appreciate that fear. What we have to do is to take the power out of Washington so that we don't have to be afraid that somebody else is going to control it. There will be nothing to control. As long as that power exists there, you're going to have lobbyists. The answer is not to pass laws saying lobbyists shouldn't be allowed to do this or shouldn't be allowed to do that. The answer is to take the jackpot away that these lobbyists are fighting over, and then the lobbyists will have to go find something else to do for a living because there will be no point hanging around Washington because there's no money to be doled out. I take it you would eliminate all antitrust legislation? Oh, yes. The antitrust laws were created in the first place by large companies who were afraid of losing their markets to smaller companies. The antitrust laws do more to keep young upstart companies out of big industries that exist and protect the, the positions of the large companies that are there already. We have never had a situation in this country where one company has tied everything up and, and uh, been able to control the market, and yet we hear about it over and over and over again. Gee, if it weren't for the government, we'd have this terrible situation. Standard Oil was lowering the price of oil day by day by day at the turn of the century until the Federal Trade Commission moved in and stopped Standard Oil from lowering their prices and broke up Standard Oil, and then the oil prices stabilized instead of continuing to go down. Everything that government does turns out to be the opposite of what well-intentioned people want. Government doesn't work, and whatever it is we think that it's going to do for us, we find that, that uh, uh, all it does is make it worse. And in, in my book, Government Doesn't Work, the first half of it explains why it is that all of these programs that we keep thinking, oh, if only they would do this, it will take care of us, why they all turn to ashes eventually.